this is Donna Ferguson, and we're from uh, the Central Texas area in the United States. My wife gave me the criteria that uh, what, what I needed to look for. I, of course, I was retired prior to her retiring. So I was sitting at home with not a lot to do, so she said, find us a place to live, and here's where I want to live. And of course, her biggest requirement was to live on the beach or near a beach. So I started looking, uh, you know, we looked at Panama, we looked at Ecuador, we looked at Costa Rica, uh, we looked at Mexico in various places. Uh, one of the places we looked at was uh, Merida because we had been to Progreso uh, on a cruise ship. We also had been to uh, Cozumel on a cruise ship. So I looked at those areas. Uh, and Puerto Morelos, Cancun, those areas. Uh, but a lot of the feedback that I got was that uh, Merida was hot. <laughs> and, you know, Cancun and places like that were more party towns, you know, more tourist areas. And uh, quite by accident, I guess, we found a YouTube video of uh, Huatulco and started digging deeper and uh, thought, well, this is a good possibility. So we just kept researching it and decided this is the place we wanted to try. Once she finally retired and we sold the house, we set a target date of leaving and had already made a decision this is where we were coming. We had not visited prior. We got on the airplane on November 3rd, which was her birthday. And uh, we landed here November 3rd in the afternoon. We had pre-rented a condo, and uh, here we are again. Uh, so, no, we never really looked at any place or visited any other place. We, uh, we rented fully furnished, and we brought uh, two check bags and a couple of carry-ons, and that was it. Uh, we sold everything we had, cars, house, uh, furniture. We either gave it away or sold it. So. We came to stay. We had every intention of staying here for at least six months. We had a six month rental. The criteria, as I said, that she set, which was she wanted to live on or near a beach. And of course, my, my first thought was uh, South Padre Island because we had been there before. And she says, nope, the water's not blue. <laughs> I want to live where the water is blue. Okay. So, you know, that's either the Caribbean or the Pacific coast which is close. And that was another thing. We still wanted to be in a close proximity to the states so we could go back whenever we wanted. Although Huatulco was originally planned and designed to be a tourist destination, um, they're still mostly, the locals mostly speak Spanish. A lot do not speak any English. So one of the things that I wish we had done different was I wish we had learned more Spanish before we came. We just had the normal everyday greetings and that was about it. And of course, we managed to get by by just pointing and uh, trying to explain what we wanted to do or where we wanted to go. And, and it worked, you know, we got by, but it would have been better. And of course, the heat. Now I said Merida was hot, Batulco was hot also, but the thing of it is, is there's things to do to get out of the heat. Air conditioning, uh, going to the beach, sitting under a palapa, go to a restaurant, go shopping. There are shops here in Huatulco. <laughs> so there's plenty to do. You, you just have to adapt to a different lifestyle. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not gonna like it here. But we're willing to do that. We, we don't mind uh, walking for the most part where we go. Uh, we don't mind waiting when we get somewhere. And we do understand, because we've had it happen, schedules. That's, that's not really a thing here. It's, you get what you get when you get it. it, it, it nobody's gonna get in a hurry. And you know, when somebody tells you they'll be there at three o'clock, uh, they could be there at five or they may be there the next morning. They probably will come, but probably not when they thought they would be there. And there's no, no intention of misleading you, is they just give you a best guess. And then 
you get what they're able to give. They are so accommodating that a lot of times they will over, a person may overextend themselves trying to help a lot of different people. And so therefore they run into the t time management issue, you know. Um, so that may be why they run late here or run late there. They're trying to accommodate so many different people because they are people pleasers. They want to help you. They want to please you. Um, and one of my favorite sayings from a, a waiter from a while back was, one Mexican minute, and he just laughed because he knew that's what that meant. You know, one Mexican minute, maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, it'll be, but we'll be there as quick as we can. Two years ago, during the pandemic, it was very easy to find affordable housing. Um, there is, since the pandemic has kind of eased up, the rental properties, uh, rent prices have gone way up in Huachulco. Our landlord here, we had met previously through uh, functions, and uh, so she already knew us. And so when uh, we decided that we wanted to live here, we just approached her and she had a unit available. And so we, uh, we did sign a, a lease. So it was pretty easy. Well, this, this particular uh, complex, there's 164 units here. I think there's 26 different buildings. Um, most of the units are private owned. Uh, some are, the owners live there. Some live seasonal uh, and rent out the other times. There's locals that live here. There's uh, some remodeling process going on on some of the buildings because this, this unit or these units are let's, built back in the 80s so they're 40 years old so they're and we've gone through some earthquakes which damaged some of the buildings and they're being upgraded to be more earthquake resistant um, these units here were uh, remodeled about five or six years ago very nice two bedroom one bath air conditioning in the living room and both bedrooms um, modern kitchen so you know it's very nice we're very pleased to be here like I say, since this whole 40, 45 years ago, Watulco did not exist. It, it was just wooded beachfront area. Uh, community. Yeah, so the Mexican government decided to come in and make a tourist destination like Acapulco and Puerto Vallarta and other places. Uh, so they moved out a lot of the locals and they, you know, gave them land to replace the land they took here. And so our infrastructure here, our water lines, our roads and everything are about 40 years old. So it, they're starting to deteriorate some. There's uh, some upgrades being done to the water system and everything like that. But it is, it is lacking. There are times when the water can go off and it could be off for a day or two, be off for a couple of hours. Or, couple of days. Um, Electricity is pretty solid here where we live in this area. We hear about outages around town but it's only usually for a few hours. Sometimes it could be a couple of days. Um, Wi-Fi, now that is a sore subject in Huatulco. Uh, it, it's pretty sad because uh, I think two of the entities here in Huatulco are owned by one of the richest 10 richest men in Mexico or in the world. And yet the uh, service is not, yeah, the reception, yeah, yeah. So uh, Wi-Fi is not great, but there are, there are some places here that have uh, fiber optics, which is coming quickly into Huatulco. Um, there's a hotel in particular that has uh, total play which, I mean, he pays a fortune for it, but he has um, a very good internet and people go there to conduct business. So it, it can be done. And there's, uh, like I say, there's some uh, fiber optics. So there's uh, some places where people can come down here and work. Well, I, you know, I had done a, six months ago or so, I had done a uh, uh, price breakdown 
and it hasn't really changed a whole lot because our rent has stayed steady the same. Uh, we spend to live a good basic lifestyle. We spend about 1,500 U.S. a month. Now that we don't always stay to the basics. I mean, we splurge. So we may go out and do something. We may take a tour. We may uh, go out and eat at a nicer restaurant. So uh, a couple can live on 1,500 U.S. a month. But I'm saying that if you want to live a little bit better, you can do it for 2000 easily. Uh, breakdown, you know, rent obviously is gonna be your most expensive. Utilities are not bad whatsoever. Uh, I'd say that rent, you better figure at 1500, you better figure about a third of that's gonna go to your rent. Uh, the uh, utilities, like I said, the uh, Water and electric, I mean, $50 to $100 a month for all of your utilities. Uh, buying groceries, you know, maybe a, a, a third, and eating out, maybe about a third of that $1,500 budget. So, yeah, you can live here on $1,500 easily. You can live, we have a friend who lives on approximately 1000 a month. Um, of course, coming from Texas, you know, we're used to one-stop shop like Walmart or such, you know, H-E-B. Um, so in Huatulco, the comparison would be uh, Chedrawi or Soriana. You can pretty much get whatever you need um, at either one of those. If you want um, fresher uh, fruits and vegetables, then of course, you know, we're in La Crucecita, which is El, close to El Centro. Six, eight blocks from where we live, which is on the far end of La Crucecita, would be your, um, most of your fruit and vegetable markets. Um, there are also meat markets in that same general area. Uh, so it's walking distance. Um, and actually from this area, I, we have walked to Soriana, 10 or 12 blocks. Um, we've also walked to Chidrawi. If you walk there, um, you probably count on taxiing back because then you're going to have groceries in, in bags. And the taxis are from either one of the grocery stores to where we live is 35 pesos. Yeah. So um, it's very convenient. And like I say, um, most Neighborhoods have small tiendas, which are close by, uh, where you can get your necessities, milk, bread, eggs, uh, snack foods, beer, things like that. So really in walking distance from this area, it's very, very easy uh, to get your necessities as far as groceries and everything goes. Well, I'll, I will add to what she was talking about. When you go to the grocery stores, Soriana, Chadrawe, in this case, uh, you're not going to save a lot of money. The vegetables and fruit and stuff is, is fairly fresh. Uh, but if you want the really fresh stuff, go shopping right down the street to the little tiendas. Seven or eight o'clock in the morning as the, as the shipments are coming in, You'll get your freshest fruit and vegetables, uh, and it's, I'm, I'm gonna say half the price when you buy like that. That's where the locals can live inexpensively, is they don't go to Soriana and Chidrawi per se to buy groceries. They go to the, these little shops, and uh, you can live very cheaply that way. If you cook at home every day, you can live on a lot less money. There's a little cafe right outside the uh, condominium gate uh, where for 90 pesos per person, we can get comida del dia, which is meal of the day. Uh, that includes a uh, soup and a main course and a drink. So for 180 pesos, which is what, $9 US roughly. Uh, get a very good meal. Uh, I was uh, 65 before we came down here, 
So I already had Medicare in the States, but that's not, I'm not covered here. Uh, we have to pay out of pocket for everything. Now she's not old enough to have Medicare yet. So we have to pay out of pocket for anything that she may need. So we did not purchase any extra insurance. So we're just self-insured is what I call it. Fortunately, we haven't had anything major in the minor situations we've had a bacterial infection. Had it for multiple weeks and couldn't get rid of it. Tried all the local uh, regular treatments. A friend of ours called a doctor. He came to this apartment, examined me, gave me medication out of his medical bag and prescribed some additional medicine. It only cost me 600 pesos for the office visit and half of the drugs. I find that in most cases, the medical coverage is affordable to just pay out of pocket. Uh, just recently, um, I found uh, from actually our landlord who is involved with the Red Cross here, um, found out that we have the ability to go to the local Red Cross, which is walking distance from where we live too, um, to have um, blood work done if you want to test your triglycerides and uh, glucose and whatever else uh, you may, cholesterol you may need checked. Um, so I did do that just the other day. I haven't got my results yet, but um, I went, you know, just had blood drawn, uh, let them know what um, tests I wanted conducted. And the uh, total price for the four tests I had done was 1,510 pesos. And uh, like I said, then they are going to e either email me the results or I'll go back down there and get a printed result. So very simple and very affordable. Before we came down here, I was taking blood pressure medicine and I was taking uh, medicine for type two diabetes. And over a period of time, with the change in lifestyle, exercise being a principal part of it, but the diet being very high on that list, I found that if I took the uh, diabetes medicine, my blood sugar was going too low. Uh, same thing with the blood pressure. My, my blood pressure was going too low with the medication, so I had to kind of wean myself off of it. And I've been back to my doctor two times over the last eight or nine months in the States without taking medication. Uh, my numbers were within an acceptable range as far as he was concerned. He said, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm not condoning or saying that people come down here and they can automatically get off of medication, but there's a good chance they can cut back on medication. Yeah, I mean, we both lost 30, 40 pounds within the first year of being, of being here. I think that it, uh, the weight loss is attributed to the amount of walking that we did originally. Um, but a lot of it, I think, is to do with the change of diet. I personally believe that there's so many additives in your food in the United States and the unhealthy uh, fast food restaurants that we frequented often. Um, they're not available here. Um, so we eat healthier. Um, there's not as many um, additives in, uh, in the food, the local foods here. Even though we may eat at restaurants, it, I still believe it's a healthier diet. We're more homebody than a lot of people. We, we, we don't go out a whole lot to bars and things like that. We'll meet people, friends at restaurants slash bars and, and have a meal, have a few drinks and everything. There are places, we've been told, we don't frequent them. Bars where you can go out and party till three o'clock in the morning if that's your thing. Um, one of the things that appealed to us was that this is not considered a party town, even though there are places that you can have that kind of fun. This is retirement community. The majority of our friends are in their 60s, but we do know people that have retired and moved here that are in their 40s and 50s. Uh, but if you're looking for a party town, you're going to go Puerto Escondido or uh, Puerto Vallarta, 
Acapulco, places like that. Um, but if you're looking for a laid black place to live and still enjoy life, this is a good place to be. And again, we came here to live a simpler lifestyle. That's exactly what we do. We, we live a lot more laid back. Definitely our money goes farther than it would be if we were living in the United States. You know, coming from immediate retirement straight to Huatulco is basically and my story. Um, I mean, it's just complete 180 degree change in my life. You know, uh, I didn't have to worry about an alarm clock and, you know, being somewhere at a certain time. It's just um, so much um, calmer and an easier lifestyle. Uh, and uh, love the weather, love the people, uh, love the new people that we meet who are, you know, um, foreigners or expats or yeah, however you want to uh, call them. Um, so, uh, you know, we've made it our home and uh, we're so happy here.